What's up guys, it's Covert Code here and in today's video I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make a teleporter. So the first thing you need to do is actually make sure you can see these three tabs. So make sure you go to model and click on insert object, make sure you click on the view tab up here and click on explorer and properties, okay? So let's actually build our teleporter. Now, small side note, you can actually make the teleport pads or teleporters look however you guys want. You can actually make them into a nice portal if you guys want to. However, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to keep it simple and just make them blocks. So click on the insert objects tab right there and search up part and just drag that into your game. Now, you're just going to go to properties, scroll down and find size and you're just going to set that to 414. Now you're just going to call this uh, teleport1 and you're going to make sure it's anchored. Then you're just going to go to the brick color here and just color this any color you guys want. I'm just going to make this red. Uh, that works. And I'm just going to copy. So right click, copy and paste. Okay. And I'm just going to make this uh, blue. And I'm just going to call this teleport2. And just for decoration purposes, I'm just going to make... Uh, you know, a few hills around just so you guys can actually notice the teleportation effects. So I'm just going to create a block like that, make this nice green, color the base plate as green as well. You don't have to do this part, I'm just making um, this part well, just extra, I guess. And I'm just going to copy this, paste that, and have two hills like this. And I'm just going to move this second teleport pad up here, and let's actually get scripting. Click on server script service and type up script in the insert object tab and double click on the script and just rename that teleport pads. Clear up everything in the script and let's define a few variables. Now, if you don't know what variables are, I have a video on variables. Go check out my zero to hero series. It'll pretty much get you up to speed with everything related to scripting. Link will be in the description below. So local teleport one is equal to workspace wait for child um, teleport one and local teleport two is equal to workspace wait for child teleport two now essentially you just declare two variables teleport one and teleport two this is workspace okay so workspace and you're just waiting for this child to exist this is the same as workspace dot teleport one i'm just going to use this for simplicity's sake now um i'm just going to copy this paste this and just replace that with two. So essentially we're just storing workspace dot teleport one in this variable and workspace dot teleport two inside of this variable. So let's actually use something called touch. Now, uh, let me just write this down and then I'll explain what's actually going on. So teleport one dot touched connect function it. So whenever the teleport pad, this one right here called teleport one, is gonna get touched by anything, this function here will run. Now again, I have a video on functions, so just go check that out if you don't know what those are. But essentially, whenever something touches the, the teleport brick, uh, this function here will run, um, and this hit object here, this um, argument, is what actually touches the part. So if I touch this part with my right hand, then hit will be my right hand. So I'm just going to write down a function here so like if verify player hit then uh do stuff okay so this is just to check if whatever hit this is actually a player so you don't want this to be touched by a zombie or something and have them teleport okay so if, if you do then just don't write this part but in my case i just want players to be able to teleport and just that so local function verify player hit okay and whenever something touches teleport one, we're just going to check um, by running this function. Okay, so as you guys can see here, we're just calling the function name and the script will pretty much work like this. So it'll go from the line number one all the way to line number eight. Whenever this actually happens, it'll go to line nine. And then when it gets to line nine, It'll actually move the code, like the actual place the script is reading from, to line 5. So it will make this code 
to happen. Again, if you don't know what I'm saying, just check out my video on functions. Uh, it's just basically code that you make happen whenever you guys call the function name. Okay, so if hit is a base part, so if it is actually a part, so if it's anything but a part, then this will not resume, okay? And we just want to return false at the end, okay? I'll show you guys why when we finish writing this function. Okay, so local character, okay, is equal to hit.parent. So essentially, if I touch this with my left leg, um, hit.parent will actually be my character object. Let me join the game and show you what I mean. So let me just click play, wait for this to load up. And if you go to workspace, when, whenever this actually loads, and find your character here, okay? And open this up, and let's actually go to my left foot, which is right here, okay? This is the child of my character. Therefore, the character is my, uh, my foot's parent. Okay, that might be slightly confusing if you've never done scripting. However, basically, um, if the foot is inside of the character, then the character is the parent. Okay. That's slightly tricky to understand. I'm not trying to cover the basics in this video. Uh, if you're trying to learn about the basics, again, link in the description below to my Zero to Hero series. However, all we're doing is we're checking the parent of the, the object. So if I touch this with my left foot, this will be the parent. Okay. If I touch this with my Dominus, for example, then this will be the parent. Okay. Um, so yeah, okay, back to the script. Um, so local character is hit.parent again, so this could be the character. And now we just want to check if it's a player, okay? So, because thus far, if you have a zombie and they touch uh, the, um, you know, the, the teleport pad with their hands or something, this will still work, okay? So, local player is equal to game.players get player from character get character. Now, this will return nil, which is essentially nothing, okay? It will not return anything if this is not a player, okay? So if I try and pass a zombie object, so a zombie model uh, within these parentheses, this will return nothing, okay? Now we just need to check if the player exists. So if player then, so a player actually touched this, okay? So if that's the case, then we just need to do one more thing and that's return true okay now we've got our um verify player function ready and essentially uh if it meets all of the requirements so if hit meets all of these requirements it will return true meaning it's a player okay and we can actually teleport them however if it returns false then it means that it's not a player okay so if verify player then if they somehow are a player then we can actually proceed. So hit.parent, which is the character, remember, so hit.parent is the character. And we're just going to say move to, um, let's just say we want to move this to teleport to dot position. okay? So we're just moving the player from here all the way over here by using the move to function. However, I just want to make this slightly better for you guys. We're just going to introduce a cooldown. Let me just write this function and then I'll explain. So we're just going to call it create cooldown hit.parent. Okay, so we're just passing hit.parent again. Um, instead, this time we're actually passing the character object instead of the, you know, the leg or the foot or whatever. And we're just going to write local function create cooldown character. Okay, so we're passing the character here. So local cooldown is equal to instance.new uh, bool value inside of the character, okay? So we're creating a boolean value inside of the character um, and we're just gonna call that uh, teleport cooldown, okay? And let me just finish this up and then I'll explain. So add item cooldown two. Okay, so essentially whenever a player, a confirmed player actually touches the, the teleport pad, they will get teleported, but beforehand, okay, they're actually going to have a value created inside of their character, okay? So let's just say this is our character right there, and this guy touches the teleport pad. This will happen, okay? So we're just going to create a bool value inside of our character here, and we're just gonna call this teleport 
cooldown. Okay, that's all that happens. And this line over here pretty much just deletes the this value after two seconds. Okay, so let me just remove the dummy and. We just need to do one more check before this is completely done. So remember how we had to verify the player. We also want to check and make sure that they don't have this value inside of their character. Why? Because if they do, that means they are on cooldown. So essentially, we want them to wait two seconds every time they want to teleport, pretty much. So if not a uh, character, find first child, teleport, cooldown, then, and then we just move this over here okay so if it doesn't manage to find teleport cooldown inside of their character then that means that you know they're cleared they can teleport again it's fine so now if we click play uh let's just test this out so loading in and let's just try and touch this here okay and as you guys can see it teleported me from here to here now, I also want to make it so this teleports you back if you touch it, okay? So that's what we're going to do. That's the final thing um, we're going to do is copy this, okay? Paste it, uh, change this from teleport 1 to teleport 2, and change this from teleport 2 to teleport 1. And that's pretty much that. You know, that's all that there is. So click play, let's join, and test this out. So I'm just going to check uh, if this works. So I'm just going to tele teleport uh, up there. And if I touch this again, I'm going to teleport down here. Touch this again. You know, touch it again. There you go. Uh, and you just got uh, working teleport pads now, pretty much. So that's it for this tutorial, guys. Let me know if you like this video by smashing that like button. Um, leave suggestions in the comment section down below suggesting what, I, what videos I should make next. And I'll see you guys next time.